What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we have a very special video that I don't think I've ever done before. And before we get started, I do want to give a huge shout-out to Wadfix because I think he did this video like two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. I can't remember. But today's video, guys, is what if WWE restarted, okay? So what this is, what we're basically saying here is that Vince McMahon has stepped down and that we're living in this fantasy world here. Obviously, this would never happen, obviously. Basically, what we're saying is that Vince McMahon has stepped down and he has elected Trey Whiteicus, Trey White, leader of MDT right here, as the head of WWE. Like, I will take over Vince McMahon's job, which means I have control, full creative control over everything, the shows, you know, how they're run, what talent's pushed, how I want the shows to be operated, what pay-per-views I want to do, everything like that. I will now be the owner of WWE and what I say goes. So pretty much what we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to give you exactly how I would restart WWE and how I would fix the atrocity that we witnessed on a week weekly basis on Monday Night Raw. Everybody knows like the shows are just in shambles and it's just a big disappointment to see week in and week out like how matches don't mean anything. They're all formulaic. Nothing seems to be important. No matches really matter. They ruin things when they are good and it's just very frustrating as fans to see. So I figured we could lighten things up here today and give you my own personal fantasy style booking of restarting WWE from the ground up and giving you exactly how I would do it if I was Vince McMahon right now. All right guys, so let's Let's go ahead and get started with everything. So we're starting at the ground level. So the first thing that I would do, number one, is that I would bring back general managers, okay? I see Eric Bischoff right here. Obviously, Eric Bischoff just got let go, and Bruce Pritchard is now the leader or the head executive writer for SmackDown or whatever the case. Uh, it's very unfortunate because I love Eric Bischoff so much, and I hate that he had to, you know, get let go or whatever the case is. Apparently, he got replaced, and now he's not even with the company anymore. But Eric Bischoff would be one of my general managers. I don't know where my other figure is that I need right here, but the other general manager I would have is Paul Heyman. So I would have Eric Bischoff as my one general manager and then Paul Heyman as my other. So now that we've gotten that, I would have general manager Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman. So Eric Bischoff will be over on Monday nights and Paul Heyman would be ahead of Friday night SmackDown on Fox. From there, guys, we would do a one night special where we did a draft and it would be on the network. We would do this live on WWE Network. It'd be a two, three hour event and we would, it could even even be longer than that if you wanted. We would have some matches take place, maybe some championship matches to decide who's going to be the starting champions of each brand. So how I'd have it, guys, is I would have Eric Bischoff on one side of the stage with his own Raw podium, and I'd have Paul Heyman on the other side with his own SmackDown podium, and they would be talking trash back and forth, making their picks, you know. Uh, the picks really don't matter, you know. I would say that maybe like Undertaker, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, guys like that are actually not eligible to be drafted because they're not with the company right now. I would not have Brock Lesnar in anywhere near the company at this moment. If he is drafted, maybe he can go one overall, but maybe he's not around. Like, I'm not I'm not including him really in this scenario. So it'd be a network special. We would have draft night. We would have, you know, deciding champions for each brand, you know, wrestling and saying, you know, maybe it's, I want this guy and this guy to fight to see who, who becomes our starting off US champion, our IC champion, or WWE champion, whatever the case. So that'd be our network special. We'd finish our draft. We'd have our rosters. We'd have Raw and we'd have SmackDown. So to start off our brands, guys, the first thing that I would do is that I would send the WWE Championship over to Monday Night Raw. So the WWE title would be over on the red brand and the Universal Championship would go over to SmackDown. However, there is a twist. I would get rid of the Universal Championship. No more Universal Championship. We would disband that and now we would bring back and modernize a little bit the Big Gold World Heavyweight Championship. This would be the main championship on SmackDown and I think this would be a good way to get some nostalgia viewers into Fox. You know, it bring in a couple viewers that want to get their eyes on the product now. They'd be like, oh, I remember that championship. Let me tune in and see what that's all about. And you're probably saying, well, why don't you do the same thing for Monday Night Raw? Well, Brad, that's what we're doing. We're getting rid of the White Intercontinental Championship Championship, and we are bringing back and modernizing the Intercontinental Championship that is oval. So I would bring back the oval Intercontinental Championship and I would bring back the big gold. And that is not the only things that we're going to do with these championships, guys. Not only are we going to do that, we're getting rid of these terrible silver red strap championships for the tag titles. They're way too similar. And we would bring back the WWE Tag Team Championships for SmackDown, you know, with the blue in there. You know, you could modernize these. They don't have to be identical to this, but give us some freaking unique titles, man. Don't make them everything cookie-cutter bullcrap. Like, have all your titles have an identity. We don't need seven titles that look the freaking same. So we would bring back the WWE Tag Titles 
for SmackDown, and you guys already know what that means for Raw. We would obviously bring back the World Tag Team Championships for Raw, and again, you could modernize these titles. It wouldn't have to be the exact big gold. It wouldn't have to be the exact WWE and World Tag Titles or the exact Oval Championship. You update some logos, you tweak it a little bit, you modernize it, make it fit the times, and that's what you run with for your championship. So now this is what we would have for our championships on each brand. So we'd have Bischoff on Raw with our brand new championships coming back. We'd have Paul Heyman on SmackDown with our World Heavyweight title and our WWE Tag titles. U.S. stays the same. WWE Championship stays the same. No need to change that because, you know, you want some... Yeah, I think these, this championship has worked well for the times. It, it fits perfectly in the modern era. U.S. title ages just very, very well, updating the logo and things of that nature. So that is what we would do with our championships. And we're not done with championships just yet, guys, because we would take our 24-7 championship and we would ditch that as well. I would get rid of that and I would bring back either the hardcore championship or the 24-7 championship can exist, but I would redo the look of it. I, I maybe call it the extreme championship like we see on MDT Live because I think that a title like this would represent it way better and I would not have it brand exclusive. I would have whatever superstar is the champion would flip back and forth, whatever, and I guess if that person is on SmackDown, he becomes champion, then he's able to flip flop back and forth to Raw. And then if you lose the championship, you stay where you were originally. And I would probably make this like YouTube exclusive or something with social media and YouTube being a huge deal now. I would probably make it where the hardcore title, extreme title, whatever the hell we'd call it, would be a YouTube exclusive championship or something like that with the champion wrestling minusculely on television. So from there, guys, I would declare my champions for each brand. Now on SmackDown side of that, we'll get to SmackDown. Just forget about SmackDown, okay? Now we're getting into our rosters. Now if you guys want to know what our rosters are, I have written down the rosters and they're not completed. Like I just went with, you know, what I thought would be best and this is kind of what I came up with and you guys will see here what we've got. So over on Monday Night Raw, guys, the WWE Champion is going to be Jeff Hardy. Now I know what you're thinking, Brad. You're like, my God, it's 2019, but I think this man deserves another title run with the strap and I think that he could do it and I think that uh, this would be it right here. He would be leading the way on Monday Night Raw, at least for what I would do. You know, first off, I would have him return from injury and uh, I'd have him win the championship. Maybe he could return from injury on the, the first night after the draft or something and have him get on a big surge of momentum and I'd have Jeff Hardy win the WWE Championship. So this would be my WWE Champion. He'd be my big man on campus. We would have Jeff Hardy running nuts around Monday Night Raw. He would rock the face paint. He would look good. WWE Champion Jeff Hardy. Now we're going into our Intercontinental Champion, guys, and I would elect Kevin Owens to be the Intercontinental Champion. He'd have his Oval Intercontinental Championship. He would be looking fresh. Look how beautiful that looks. I think that Kevin Owens is a perfect representation for the Intercontinental Championship. A perfect guy to lead off our division and everything like that. So we would have Kevin Owens and Jeff Hardy as our two champs. From there, guys, we're going into our World Tag Team Championships, and if you guys are wondering about the women, I would leave the women the same. Uh, whatever women are on Raw and SmackDown right now, you could keep that. Maybe all those women that we discussed that are coming back from injury. Uh, Becky Lynch would stay your Raw Women's Champion, and Bayley would stay your SmackDown Women's Champion. You could flip flop the rosters however you like. I would put a huge focus on the singles division, and I would get rid of the Women's Tag Team Championships like we've discussed before. I would put a very core, I would, I would make sure that the best of the best for the women were represented. We would not have, you know, these random terrible six-man tag for the women and these terrible matches on TV. We would have good women's matches and we would make it a priority. And that would be the same thing for the tag team championships. I would make the tag team titles on both brands some of the most prestigious championships in the entire world. And that is starting off with our champions, guys. I would have Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison as my champions. So I would bring, obviously, John Morrison, you know, it's been rumored or reported that he has re-signed with WWE. So if that's the case, I would put him in a tag team with Dolph Ziggler, and I would have them win the World Tag Team Championships. I think that this is a fantastic tag team, especially uh, when you look at their gimmicks, you know, the show-off gimmick, and, you know, they both have six packs, and they look good, and this is a perfect perfect way to kick off our brand right here. Look at this Monday Night Raw lineup of champions with Becky Lynch. I mean, that's a damn good little look for your champions. Jeff Hardy, Kevin Owens, Ziggler, and Morrison as your tag titles, and then you have Becky Lynch as your women's champion. So if we get into the rest of the brand, guys, if you were wondering, you know, well, what's the rest of your roster look like? Here's what I'm looking at, and, and again, you could add and take away if you would like, but this is just what I'm thinking. For our singles division, we have Seth Rollins, because I really like the, you know, I really love the Monday Night Rollins gimmick. I love the, the ring to that. It's just nice. 
and he could turn heel. I'd have Seth Rollins turn heel, get out of this cuck-like, you know, performance that he's been giving us, and give him some aggression, have him, you know, go wild, and, you know, give him, just give him some heel antics. I think he could be uh, the top heel on Monday Night Raw. It'd be Monday Night Rollins, you know, uh, this show's all about me, yada, yada, yada. You have Trash Corbin. He would not be a top heel, but he is a heel over here on the red brand. Another top heel would be Randy Orton. Obviously, I think that it's time for him to get away from SmackDown. A top babyface would be Aleister Black. I'd have him very mysterious, guys. I don't know why this man even talks on television. Like, why the hell is he speaking? Don't, he doesn't need to talk. Don't have him talk. Have him just be the undertaker of the new era, man. Have him mysterious. Have him weird. Nobody understands this man. Have him a tweener. Everybody loves him because they don't understand him. Like the undertaker was. Another top heel would be Samoan Joseph. Another top babyface would be Ali. Another top babyface would be Rey Mysterio. We'd have Kofi Kingston over here. Bobby Trashley is here. Shinsuke Nakamura is another good babyface. Buddy Murphy could be a babyface or a heel. And again, we have Braun Strowman back here because I think he fits Monday Night Raw. I don't want him on SmackDown. I just think he fits there. He could be face. He could be heel. He could be in a tag team. Maybe him and Bobby Lashley could make a cool tag team. I don't know. But that's what I have for my singles division. Again, you could add or take away. Going into the tag team division, guys, we have Morrison and Ziggler, our champions. We have Rusev Day. I would bring back Aiden English. I'm not sure if he's retired or if he's injured or what the case is, but I'd have Rusev and Aiden English as a unit again and have them as Rusev Day and be one of the most over babyface tag teams on Monday Night Raw. Morrison and Ziggler would obviously be heels. Another heel tag team would be The Revival. A face tag team would be The New Day, and then another tag team would be AOP, and you could get some other tag teams in here. Again, Hawkins and Ryder could be over here. You could have the Lucha House Party if you wanted. Heavy Machinery could possibly be over here as well, but I'm just spitballing. So that is my Monday Night Raw roster. I'm pretty happy with it. I would love to know your comments down below, guys. What do you think about that roster? What do you think about the heel face dynamics? What do you think about my champions? Again, I think this is a very solid, like, this is beautiful looking. I love this. All four of these champions right here, I, I watch TV every week. Give us some good storylines, and that would be it for our red brand of Monday Night Raw with Eric Bischoff at the helm. But now we're flipping it over to SmackDown Live side of things. It's not SmackDown Live. That is going to get so freaking old. Like, am I ever going to get over that? All right, guys, so everybody knows that on SmackDown on Fox, they want it to be more sports-oriented. You want a more, you know, live roster. You want an athletic roster. So that is what I went with for SmackDown. I have a lot of high flyers. I have a lot of great athletes over here, and that is what we are basing it off of. We also have some great, uh, you know, gimmicks going on over here that Fox likes, like the Fiend Bray Wyatt and things of that nature. So what we would do, guys, is we would start off our thing, and maybe the on that Draft Network special, we would have our finals of a tournament. I would have a, tur I would have a freaking tournament with all these guys in it, or, you know, the top eight or the top whatever. I'd have probably eight competitors in the tournament. And the finals of the tournament to crown our first World Heavyweight Champion would be between AJ Styles and Finn Balor. This would be our tournament finals, and I would have it where Finn Balor would come out on top, okay? I would have Finn Balor come out on top, and he would be our first World Heavyweight Champion. And I think I would do this because I think that, uh, you know, when he, w when he first got called up to the main roster and he, you know, he was like the third pick for Raw and he won the Universal Championship, whatever push he was going to get on that night and that, that, you know, that year, that is what I would go back to. Whatever they were planning on, you know, pushing him with the demon gimmick and the champion and being, you know, the top babyface there, I would have had this take place here on SmackDown and redo it with the World Heavyweight Championship. So this is our guy leading the way. We'd have Finn Balor as our World Heavyweight Champion. For our United States Champion, we're moving to the mid-card, guys. We're going to have Sami Zayn overcome all the odds, maybe do like a big, uh, maybe like a big battle royal or something, and have Sami Zayn win our United States Championship. He has never won a championship besides the NXT title. He has never won a main roster championship, so I would have Sami Zayn win the United States Championship and win his first mid-card championship. He's a perfect mid-card babyface. It'd be perfect for him, and I think this is the way to go. So we would have Sami Zayn win our United States Championship, and he would lead our mid-card division. As far as the tag teams are concerned, guys, again, we are bringing back the WWE Tag Team Championships, and I would either give this to Harper and Rowan, or I would give it to the Usos. So, either one doesn't really matter. I guess we can just go with the Usos for now. That's fine. You know, they're credible champions. They're good athletes, and that would be great. As far as the rest of it goes, you guys know that Bayley is our SmackDown Women's Champion. And as far as the rest of the roster, guys, we have Roman Reigns, Cedric Alexander, The Fiend Bray Wyatt, Ricochet, Andrade, Drew McIntyre, Matt Hardy, Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin, and Cesaro. Now, one thing I thought about doing is possibly putting Chad Gable and Cesaro together or Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin together. I like that tag team. You know, I don't like this. I like, you know, Chad Gable as a singles star, but I think that he could fit in any tag team. I think he's a great tag team wrestler, as we saw with Jason Jordan. If, obviously, if J 
Jason Jordan could wrestle again, I would put him together with Chad Gable and American Alpha would be reformed, or I would have Cesaro and Sheamus if Sheamus doesn't have to retire, put those two guys back together and form the bar again and have them running wild on the tag team division. As far as the tag team division is concerned, guys, we have the Usos, which are the champions. We have the club, Harper and Rowan, the Viking Raiders, Sanity, and any other tag team you wanted to plug in there. So I'd bring back Sanity. I would get all those guys back together, you know, get Alexander Wolf, get Nikki Cross, get... Killian Dane, put them guys together and have them running wild. I also put the Usos over here so that we could have a big heel turn by Roman Reigns. He could join the bloodline. They'd be a heel faction over here. So Roman Reigns could be a top heel. AJ Styles could be a top heel or babyface. Finn Balor could be a heel babyface. I'd have him as a babyface. Sami Zayn would be a babyface over here. Cedric's a babyface. The Fiend's a tweener because obviously, you know, nobody's going to boo the man. Ricochet's babyface. Andrade's heel. Matt Hardy would be a good flipper flop. He could be heel or babyface in the mid card. The only reason he's on SmackDown as a mid card level is I didn't want him over on Raw with his brother Jeff and I didn't want them as a tag team. I kind of wanted you know them to get their own single star ability and if they were on the same brand they could obviously be a tag team but this is what I have for now. I think that pretty much does it guys. I mean that would be the basis for everything that I would do as far as restarting WWE. I think that that's a really good starting point. Obviously you could build off of this. You could you know do what you want with it but I would love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think. I, I think that you know I, I came up with this in maybe like 15 minutes just kind of spitballing and coming up with brainstorming and all of that good nature. Again, please let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think. Again, I want to know exactly what your thoughts are. What do you think about this restart? Do you think this would be a pretty cool idea? Do you think it would be awesome? Again, a huge shout out to Wadfix as well for making this video possible and giving me inspiration behind this video idea. But I think that is going to do it, guys. Hopefully TV gets better. You know, I don't expect anything much because, you know, it's just sad to see with, uh, I am just thank God we have NXT and AEW to look forward to and watch and enjoy wrestling because the main roster right now is in shambles again I just there, it just doesn't feel like anything's important it just seems like they just do whatever they want they don't put any thought behind anything there's no logic and it's just it's just sad to see but please let me know down in the comment section below what you think of these ideas subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video thank you